Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our online service, and especially a warm welcome if you are joining us for the first time. Uh, this week, we are pausing our series through the book of Colossians, and we are looking at Pentecost, uh, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon the church to equip us for the work of mission. Therefore, as we uh, study God's word today and as we sing uh, his praise and song, as we pray together, we will be reflecting upon this particular truth. Let me pray as we begin our time together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent forth your son into this world, conceived by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you furnished him with all necessary gifts to be our mediator by your spirit. And thank you that through your spirit, you raised him mightily from the dead. Thank you that through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit upon us and you have equipped us for the work of proclaiming Christ and Christ crucified. Grant, we pray that we would grow in the power of your spirit to proclaim Jesus and to the praise of of your glory. Amen. We're now going to declare to one another uh, the words of the Apostles' Creed, this summary uh, of our Christian faith. Uh, you'll find it in the service outline uh, for today. Uh, together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's good to be with you again on this Pentecost Sunday as we come together as a people of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures urge us repeatedly to acknowledge and confess our many sins and evil ways and that we should not try to hide them from mighty God, our Heavenly Father. We are to confess them with a humble, penitent and obedient heart so that we may receive forgiveness through God's infinite goodness and mercy. Let us then, with a pure heart and humble voice, approach our Father's throne of grace and pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbours in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and beef, he pardons and absorbs all that truly repent and believe his holy gospel. For this reason, let us ask him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our lives may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 to 32. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, 
but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned, among the nations to which you came, and I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God, and I will deliver you from all your uncleannesses, and I will summon the grain and make it abundant and lay no famine upon you. I will make the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field abundant, that you may never again suffer the disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves for your iniquities and your abominations. It is not for your sake that I will act, declares the Lord God. Let that be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, church. The reading for today will be taken from Psalm 104, verses 1 to 24. Psalm 104 Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of a man, oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees, the high mountains are for the wild goats, the rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark the seasons, the sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness, and it is night. When all the beasts of the forest creep about, the young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is taken from 
Acts chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 1 to 21. Acts chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own like tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, good morning, sisters and brothers. Uh, let's pray as we come to God's word. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you speak to us uh, by your spirit through your word this morning. Uh, we pray that you guard us and guide us, uh, and help us to think rightly uh, and therefore act rightly. And we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. Well, fans of the Liverpool, Liverpool Football Club will probably recognise those lyrics as their theme song. 
Uh, the song, You'll Never Walk Alone, originally came from a musical in the 40s uh, and was performed in the 60s by a local Liverpool band. In the last few weeks, it's also become, in some places, an anthem of support for frontliners and for those in quarantine due to COVID-19. In the song, walking is a metaphor for living and for progressing in the journey of life. It's a metaphor that we met a couple of weeks ago in chapter 2, verse 6 of Colossians, uh, which reads this. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. As we looked at Colossians over the last few weeks, I think we've come to realize that that particular verse really summarizes the message of the book. Uh, Colossians has shown us the glory and supremacy and sufficiency of Christ Jesus the Lord. We see that, that Christ is the creator and the ruler of all, the one by whom and through whom and for whom everything exists. We have seen what he has done for us in his death on the cross, taking our sin and our guilt and our punishment in our place. And we see that he has been raised from the dead and ascended to God's right hand on high. And the message of the glorious Lord Jesus has come even to us Gentiles, and we have received Christ Jesus the Lord. Colossians also has been warning us about the dangers of adding to Christ or, or walking away from him. And instead we've been shown the shape of the genuine Christian life, as opposed to religious and spiritual alternatives being presented to the Colossians. And we saw it summarized once again, Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. And last week we began to see how to walk in Christ uh, and we saw that the motivation was what God has what God has already done for us in Christ a and we saw the need to engage in deliberate and decisive action and we saw a whole list of things that we should put off and in a couple of weeks time when we get back to Colossians we will see what to put on instead and we'll see what that looks like in church at home at work in the world and those are all things about our character, about how we walk. And so the Christian life we saw is two things, receiving Christ the Lord and then walking in Him. This week, as it's Pentecost Sunday, we will ask the question, where does the Holy Spirit fit into this? We know the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He is the Spirit of God. Uh, we know that Jesus has ascended into heaven. Uh, but we saw in Colossians, we have Christ in us, or Christ among us. And we know that he is with us by his Spirit. Uh, the Spirit is God, who is, who is even with us now. He dwells in us individually. He dwells among us as a church. Uh, and because we have the Spirit, then we have Christ. And if we have Christ, then we have the Father. And, and so the Spirit is the one who, who mediates God's presence to us. But he does not draw attention to himself, and rather he points our hearts, he points our church to Jesus and brings glory to him. It's not that surprising, therefore, that we don't read much about the Spirit in the book of Colossians. In fact, he's only mentioned once in the whole book. I'll let you read Colossians yourself again to see if you can find the reference. But from other parts of the Bible, we discover he has quietly at work behind the scenes in all the things we've seen there. And today we're going to go behind the scenes, so to speak, and look at the work of the Spirit who, who points us to Christ Jesus the Lord and enables us to walk in Him. We've already been reminded that we start our Christian life by receiving Christ Jesus the Lord. Now on the one hand, that was something we did. We heard the Gospel and we believed. We believed that Jesus died for our sins and rose again and we trusted him to save us as our risen Lord, and so we handed our lives over to him. And we determined that from that point onward, we did not want to live for our old self, but we would live for him. All that is true. But when you look at the other side of the same coin, we discover we could never have made that decision unless the Spirit of God was working in us. Now that's why the Apostle Paul uh, says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, he says this, No one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except 
in the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about mouthing the words. He's, he's talking about the Spirit enabling us to believe Jesus is Lord from the heart. And that is the Spirit's work. And the gospel he brings us is the Spirit's word about Jesus. And we've been reading and hearing about the greatness and glory of Jesus in Colossians. Who do you think is the one who enabled Paul to write those words? It's the Spirit who points us to Christ. Who do you think has been empowering preachers down through the ages to preach them? It's the Spirit who points us to Christ. Who do you think worked in your heart to enable you to believe in the glory of Jesus and entrust yourself to Him? It's the Spirit who points us to Christ. And the gospel of Christ is preached to us through the Spirit's messengers, in the Spirit's power, and the Spirit opens our hearts to believe and accept that message and put our faith in Christ. Apart from the Spirit, none of us would know Jesus as our Lord. Remember when Jesus was speaking to, to Nicodemus back in John chapter 3? Uh, John chapter 3, uh, Jesus said, uh, down in verse, uh, in verse 3, Truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 5, he says, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right? You need God to wash you on the inside. You need God's Spirit to come into you and give you new life. A flesh gives birth to flesh, Jesus said. People can have children. But only the Spirit can give spiritual life. And so for us to, to come to Christ, to turn away from sin, and to have a saving faith in Him, that, that actually took a miracle. And that was the life-giving work of the Spirit. He enabled us to believe in Jesus. Have you received Christ Jesus the Lord? If you have, it's because of the Holy Spirit. We've seen from the Colossians as well, the second part of the Christian life is closely linked to the first. Remember Colossians chapter 2 verse 6? As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Live His way. And while on the one hand that is a command for us, something for us to do, motivated by what God has done for us in Christ, Colossians also hints there is another side to the coin. Uh, for in our passage last week, uh, it also says that our new selves are being renewed in knowledge after the image of their Creator. In other words, on the one hand we are told to change, and at the same time we are told that God is at work changing us to become more like Christ in our character. And that too is the work of the Spirit. Uh, the Spirit is the one who leads that change. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, uh, in verse 14, uh, we read that all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And verse 13 explains what the Spirit leads us to do. It says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. In other words, the Spirit is leading us to kill sin in our lives. Remember how last week we saw from Colossians a whole list of things to get rid of. Well, the Spirit is the one who is working in our hearts and telling us to do that. The Spirit is anti-sin, and He's leading us to be anti-sin as well. Uh, we see that again uh, in Galatians chapter 5. Uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 18, uh, we read that if we are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law. And what does it mean to be led by the Spirit here? Well, in verse 17, the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. The works of the flesh, from verses 19 to 21, uh, are listed there, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like that. Doesn't that remind you about that, that list of things that we saw in Colossians last week that we were, were meant to get rid of? On the other hand, the fruit of the Spirit, in verse 22, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And these are the kind of things that Colossians is going to tell us to put on. And again, here in Galatians, we see that it's the Spirit who is leading us to do that. If we are led by the Spirit, we will produce the fruit. If we are genuine believers, then we will and we must go along with Him in that direction. If we belong to Christ, verse 24, we have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We have said, no, flesh, we want you to die. 
And so we need to follow the Spirit in putting that decision into practice day by day. If we live by the Spirit, verse 25, the Spirit has given us new life. Let us walk by the Spirit. Let's keep in step with the Spirit. You see, the Spirit leads us away from sin to being like Christ in our character. And so being led by the Spirit, keeping in step with the Spirit, producing the fruit of the Spirit, they're all about being godly. They're all about, to put it in Colossian kind of terms, walking in Christ. But what they help us see is that our walking in Christ is not alone. The Spirit is there, behind the scenes, guiding us, helping us, leading us, changing us to be more like Christ. And again, that's hardly surprising, is it? Uh, because that is actually what God promised in our Old Testament reading today. I remember after God's people were sent into exile, uh, when they didn't obey God's law, God made a promise to them through the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, he promised them uh, in Ezekiel 36 uh, that one day he would bring them back. Uh, in verse 25, uh, he says that he's going to wash them clean from their sins. In verse 26, he's going to, to give them a new heart. Uh, in fulfillment of that, we've seen that in John 3, we've been born of water and the Spirit. And then look again in verse 27. God says, And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. See, the same spirit who will give God's people new birth would enable them from the inside to obey him. Now, the spirit not only brings us to Christ, but he grows us in Christ. This spiritual growth is a work that needs our cooperation, which is why the Colossians are told to put certain things off and put certain things on. But we have the Spirit, and that should make all the difference, because we have God himself working with us and in us to change our lives. Now, there are a number of things the Spirit uses uh, as he does that, and we're just going to look at two of them this morning. First of all, the Spirit speaks God's Word to us in an ongoing way. And it gives us soft hearts to believe and obey. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all Scripture is breathed out by God. It is God's Word because, because your Word is carried on your breath, isn't it? But, but the word for breath is also the word for Spirit. You could say the Bible is God's Spirit. And the Apostle Peter, speaking about the Old Testament, says that no prophecy was ever produced by the will of men, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Which is why the writers of Hebrews can quote Psalm 95 and Hebrews 3, 7 and say, this is what the Holy Spirit says, and make the same quote one chapter later in Hebrews 4, 7, it says, this is what God said through David. What God said through David a thousand years beforehand, is what the Holy Spirit continued to say at the time of the writer. And the Holy Spirit still speaks through the word that he has given. The Bible is the Spirit's word. As we've been reading Colossians together over the last, uh, as we've been reading Colossians together over the last few weeks, the Spirit's been at work among us, hasn't he? Because reading, hearing, believing, and obeying the word of God is a profoundly spiritual experience. That is the Spirit that honors Christ and gives him the central place because the, the Spirit glorifies Christ. And it's the, an experience that is our great privilege given to us uh, by our gracious God. The Spirit speaks to us in his word. He tells us that Christ is Lord. He tells us what it means to walk in him. And he gives us hearts that believe that word and want to obey. Because through the word, the Spirit assures us of God's love. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, now the Bible tells us that God, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And how does he do that? Well, verse 6 says that he shows us that Christ died even for undeserving sinners like us. God shows us his love in verse 8, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, it's the Spirit who enables us to believe and appreciate and respond to the love of God that is shown at the cross. 
And by enabling us to better and better grasp that love, he enables us to endure suffering, have to build character through it, and to hold on to the hope that we have in the future. If it were not for the Spirit, the death of Jesus would have no meaning for us, and the love of God would not motivate us to change. It is the Spirit who enables us to believe the gospel and to be changed by it. And that is why in Colossians, the Spirit through Paul keeps circling back to the cross. He tells us that in Christ we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He reminds us that we've been reconciled to God in Christ by the a body of flesh by his death to, to, to be presented holy and blameless and, and above reproach before him. He tells us that God cancelled the record of sin that stood against us, nailing it to the cross with Christ, so that Christ bore the penalty of sin on our behalf. The Spirit shows us the love of God at the cross of Christ and applies that love to our hearts. He enables us to believe that we have died with Christ, that we are seated with Him, that we will appear with Him in glory when He returns, and so fills our hearts with thankfulness to God and love for Him, and thus motivates us to walk in His ways. Not only when we first believed, but in an ongoing way. And so the same Spirit who enabled us to receive Christ Jesus the Lord empowers us to walk in Him. Brothers and sisters, there are many more things we could say today about the work of the Spirit. But what we see this morning is that even though the Spirit is hardly mentioned in Colossians, He is very active behind the scenes. He is the one who enables us to receive Christ Jesus the Lord and then walk in His ways. And He does it as He speaks His word to our hearts, giving us new life, showing us the love of Jesus, and giving us the will to obey Him from the inside. This is not something that we can manufacture or manipulate, but it is something we can pray for. And in a moment, we'll all pray together for, for those of us who are watching this today but who haven't yet put their trust in Jesus. And we will pray that the Spirit will enable them to receive Christ Jesus the Lord. And we will also pray for those of us who have already received Christ Jesus the Lord. And we will pray that the Holy Spirit will enable us to walk in Him and be changed step by step into His image. And that as we do that, we will truly know that because the Spirit is in us, Christ is with us. And so as we walk in Christ, we never walk alone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to die upon the cross to pay the penalty of our sin. Thank you that you have raised him from the dead and, and seated him at your right hand on high. We, we thank you that through him you have given your Spirit to all your people. And because your Spirit is with us, you are with us. Christ is with us. And we live day by day in your presence. And so we do not walk alone. And we pray, Father, today for, for those who are part of this online service who, who don't yet know the reality of the new birth, of sins forgiven, of eternal life in Christ. Have mercy upon them, we pray. Please would you send forth your Spirit to give them that new birth that they cannot give themselves. Please, would your Spirit convince them of their sin and their guilt so they, they recognize their need for a Savior. Please, would you send your Spirit to open their eyes that they might see Jesus who loves them and gave his life on the cross for them to pay the penalty of their sin. Please, would your Spirit enable them to trust in Jesus as their Savior and submit to him as their Lord that they may truly know you as their Father and Jesus as their loving Master whom they will serve all their days. May they receive Christ Jesus the Lord. And Father, we pray for all of us who know Christ Jesus as our Lord. And we thank you so much for the work of your Spirit enabling that in our lives. 
Father, we know your Spirit is leading us to, to kill sin in our lives. And so, led by the Spirit, that is what we want to do. Please, Father, may your Spirit enable us to change our attitudes and our behavior to be more like Jesus. Please, may he keep speaking to us in his word. Please, will you open the eyes of our hearts that we will see and appreciate your love more and more. Uh, please, will you keep on taking us back to the cross where we see your love displayed. Please, will you keep changing us by that love into the image of your Son, that we may indeed walk in him all the days of our lives. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Pentecost Sunday when you first sent down your Spirit to us. We thank you that your Spirit equipped the apostles with the ability they needed to go out and preach your word. And we thank you that because of that, your word is now heard far and wide. We pray that your Spirit will also continue to guide us today, as it did for those who have gone before us, to go out and share the gospel to friends, family members and colleagues who have not yet been saved. And just as the Spirit granted the Apostles the tongue to preach in various languages, we pray that you would also grant us, through your Spirit, the right words to say. And we pray also that we would embody the fruits of your Spirit in our thoughts and actions, that it may be a testament of your Spirit at work within us. Lord, we lift up the ongoing COVID-19 situation to your hands, which has so uprooted our lives as we knew it. We pray that you will grant comfort and peace to those who have lost family members to the disease and to those who are sick with the illness and also those who know people personally that have been tested positive. We also give thanks and pray for the frontliners who are putting themselves at risk, at risk every day. And we pray that you would grant them protection and strength to continue doing their jobs. We pray also for the ongoing research efforts into a treatment or a vaccine and that in your will, a cure may soon be found so that we may return to some semblance of normalcy. Lord, also help us remember that we don't know why these things happen and that you have and everything that you have revealed to us is sufficient. Help us not be tempted to make speculations into your behaviour or to try to explain this as some sort of sign of the end times in an, in an attempt to justify the suffering. We thank you that despite these trying times, the church has still been able to faithfully congregate and we are still able to offer support to one another through telephone and online means. We pray that we would continue to be more loving of each other and to cons constantly keep in touch and pray for each other even though we are not able to see one another physically in order to uphold one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we pray for those who have lost their jobs or sources of income because of the MCO. And we pray that those, those trusting in you and your goodness will continue to do so in this difficult time. We pray that you will provide for them in your own way and help us also as a church to encourage such individuals in prayer and to show kindness and sacrificial love in, to provide help, whether it is in money, time or resources. We thank you also for our leaders at St. Mary's that have worked hard to keep the church going, even though we are not able to meet physically. We pray that you would continue to grant the pastors and ministry workers the strength and perseverance to serve the church in these trying times. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please spend a few quiet moments now praying for those people known to you and for things that may have happened over the past few days since the recording of these online prayers. Friends, as we celebrate uh, Pentecost Sunday, let us say the collect for the day of Pentecost. Together, God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Let us say together the collect for thanksgiving. Together. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely given for life and health and safety, for work and rest and friendship, and for the wonder of creation. We thank you for preserving throughout history a people for yourself. Above all, we praise you for our Saviour Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for your life-giving spirit, and the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let's say the prayer that the Lord Jesus himself taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer, together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good morning once again, and thanks again for sharing with us in this online service. If you are visiting with us at St. Mary's Online, I would love to know who you are and how we can keep in touch with you. So could you please go to our website and fill out a connection card, which is basically a form that you can uh, use to let us know uh, that you've been with us. Uh, you can use the form to also let us know if we can help you more, to, to help you to find out more about the Christian faith, uh, or if you'd like someone to be praying with you about something, uh, or if you want to find out more about our church. Uh, and if you're a regular, you can also use it uh, to let us know how we can be praying for you, or to give feedback about the online services, uh, ask questions about the passage, uh, or to uh, let us know other ways we can love and serve each other. Uh, so do make use of that. If you're a regular, you can also contribute money for ministry through online transfer uh, or boost. Uh, details of that are on our website as well. Please do be praying for Life Explored uh, and the Adult Baptism and Confirmation class, uh, both of which start this afternoon. This afternoon, you are also invited to a free online seminar by the Reverend Andy Unum on the interesting and important topic of predestination. It's at 3 p.m. It'll be broadcast live on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page, uh, and you can get details from our website or from Facebook. So please do join us for that. Two Fridays ago, when the government first released their SOPs for places of worship, we sent a message through our email mailing list just to let you know that there are no immediate plans to reopen the cathedral and that our ministries remain online. At the time of this recording, the situation remains unchanged. Let me let you know, though, that these online announcements are actually pre-recorded, uh, so there is a risk that they are out of date by the time we see them. So please do make sure that you're signed up for our emails so that you can keep up to date with the latest news on this matter, and you can do so on our website. We do know that our meeting online is incomplete, and we long for the day when we can be together again as a body, hearing and speaking God's word in love together, praying together, uh, and sharing in the sacraments as God's people. At the same time, we are thankful that the gospel continues to go out from among us in many different ways. As Paul discovered in prison, the word of God is not bound, despite the restrictions that we face. But one of the things we miss about being together is, is seeing each other's faces. So I wonder if I can ask you a favor. Immediately after the service, would you be able to take a, a photo of yourself in the setting that you're in right now? Uh, whether you're alone uh, or with your family uh, or in a Zoom group. Then, with the permission of everyone in the photo, uh, could you please send it to us so that we can show some of these photos in future online services or on social media? You can refer to the link below uh, or on our website uh, and uh, details will be there on how to upload those photos. If there are children in the photo, then parents should be the one to send it to us and give us permission to use the photo. It would be great if all of us were able to take a photo, uh, could send it in, uh, and we can do uh, this little thing. In our final game, we pray that as we walk in Christ in our day-to-day -day lives this week, 
we would do so in the Father's love, the Son's grace, and the Spirit's power. before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Well, sisters and brothers, let us close with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.